Holy shit, this, this is men. men, 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 men. Tim here with Mars Go Home. So, halation. It's cool, right? That little reddish-orange halo around the edges of bright light sources. I mean, this seems to be the buzzword around town these days. And in the age of digital perfection, we, the fine people of Earth, are constantly trying to crap up a frame to emulate the analog film style. And I love it. I mean, we should always try to hold on to a little semblance of humanity before our robot overlords enslave us and use our fleshy, meaty bodies as fuel. <clears throat> so I try to fully understand not just the how, but also the why. And when it comes to all forms of design work, the most critical question is to ask yourself, why? And in this case, why do I want halation? Well, the most basic answer I normally come up with is, you, I like it, and I want it. Okay, sweet. Let's do some research. What is halation anyway? Yeah, we know it's a pretty little glow around bright light sources, but what is it? Believe it or not, it's actually a flaw in the film. You see, light is like an annoying little sibling trying to bust down your door and all they want to do is make a mess in your room. So I've been told. I'm an only child, which means I have no friends and I can't function like a normal human being in social interactions. But I digress. When we talk about film, light wants to spread its love everywhere with a vengeance. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. To be simple as possible, and I mean extremely simple, let's look at celluloid film being comprised of four thin layers. Once the camera's aperture opens, light rushes through the gates and starts barreling through those layers. Oh, yeah. All the celluloid film does is take that light and mold it into an image. Like two planets colliding violently in space, only to create something beautiful, like a picture of your cat. The first layer it must pass through is the blue layer, then it passes through the green layer, and then after that, you guessed it, the red layer. RGB is the foundation of all humanity. All the magical combinations make up every color you can imagine. Robots will never understand that kind of love and all these RGB layers are attached to a rigid, transparent base. As light burns the image into the film stock, light must pass through all these layers. But when it gets to that last layer, the film base, it bounces back into the red layer of the film, like a racquetball. That red layer basically gets some extra pounding. My heart's beating like a rabbit. Uh, it gets some extra love. And maybe the green layer sometimes gets in on the action. But that red layer takes the brunt of all the abuse. Because of that love, it makes its presence known around the brightest parts of the frame. This results in what we call halation. Many film stock manufacturers added one more layer behind the red layer to calm that bounce back down. And it's cleverly called the anti-halation layer. It does its job mostly, but the halation still rears its pretty little head. So, okay, cool. How? Well, honey buns, I got you. So let's jump into After Effects and build us some halation. Here we are in After Effects, and I have a shot here that I did in Blender not too long ago, and I would like to add halation to it. And technically, there's more than one way to achieve halation inside of After Effects. So I am going to run through a few of them with you now. Here is the first build of halation that we're going to do. First thing we need to do is duplicate our footage. So we're going to highlight our footage here in the timeline and go to edit, duplicate. Let's go ahead and rename this to halation. The first effect that I want to put on here is a levels effect. And what we need to do is we need to crush all the dark values of this image and leave just the bright parts or the highlights because that's what we need to focus on. We're going to do that by taking this slider on the, on the histogram here and we're just going to slide this all the way down. Something like there. Take this middle one and let's slide this up pretty close. Then we can come back and dance with these levels a little bit later. The second effect that we're going to put on here is a curves effect. So we're going to take a far, this far point here on the 
graph of the curves, keep it on RGB, and we're just gonna drag this all the way down to the bottom. And it's gonna turn the frame completely black. So here's the cool thing, if we put a point just by left clicking here at the center and come back to this far right point and we slowly drag this back up, those highlights will start poking in. And then we can play with this a little bit more if we need to. And something like that. That's a good start. The next effect that I want to put on there is called a shift channels. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to just operate on the red and green values of this layer. So if we come down to the blue and take blue from and turn this completely off, It'll just give us just the red and green values. Cause like I said, the light comes in through the aperture, hits that base point here, the transparent base, and the light bounces back, hitting the red, and then a little bit of the green. So this will allow us to operate just within the green and red values. So to get that, that halo, that nice fall off from the lights, that caused the halation, we need to blur it. And the best way that I found out how to do this is through a channel blur. If we throw that on there, we can just mess with the red blurriness and the green blurriness. Now the red is gonna be more prominent. So let's start with, I don't know, value of five. Go up to the green and then that's not gonna be as strong. So let's do about three for now. If we zoom in. Just a little bit here. Gets a nice blend there. To get this to show up on our footage, we need to add it back onto it. So we're gonna go come down to the halation layer here and we're gonna go to the, the blend mode and change this to add. And let's zoom in just a little bit here on this point right here. Turn it off and on and start seeing what it's doing. How about up here? So that is one way. And if there's certain areas of the frame that you're not digging, like for me, I don't, I'm not a big fan of what's happening here on the fender of the car. It's just kind of blurring it and kind of blowing it out in my opinion. It's slightly distracting for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just highlight this and I'm just gonna draw a mask around this. Tap M twice on the keyboard and we're just gonna subtract that. And then just add something like a 50 pixel feather onto it. So that is one way of achieving halation inside After Effects. And this is a great way of doing it if you're working inside say a 8-bit workflow. So if you were working in a 16-bit or 32-bit, and by the way, we are working in a 16-bit, workflow and if you do not know how to change this just hover over the 16 bit hold down alt or command and just cycle through it until we get to 16. So let's try a different technique here. Again we need to highlight our footage and duplicate it. Edit duplicate. We're going to do some housekeeping here and name this halation and the first effect we're going to do is effect called Cineon Converter. Now we're gonna be using this one sort of outside the box of what it's intended for. This is intended to convert Cineon or DPX film footage into digital footage. And it gives us, you know, log to linear, linear to log, log to log. We're not gonna worry about anything except for the 10 bit white point. What this will do is if we drag this up, it's gonna start crushing the darker values here. So let's, Let's keep it there. We can come back to it later. The next one, again, we need a curves effect. And like we did before, we're going to take this point, drag it all the way down to the bottom, set a point in the middle, and then slowly drag this right, this far right point up until we just get the parts of the frame that we want, the highlights. Let me just drop this down just a little bit. So the next effect is I, I want to emphasize that halo around our lights. And I found that if you put a find edges effect on there, click the invert, this gets us 
pretty close to where we need to be. Now, let's throw on a tint effect. And what this will do is it'll allow us to take the white point and map it to whichever color we want. And for this one, let's put a nice red, burnt orange red on there. There we go. Now that's a little too sharp, so we need to blur it a little bit to get that fall off, get that halo fall off. And I like to use the Gaussian, Gaussian, how do, you, how do you pronounce this? Gaussian. Gaussian blur. Ha! <laughs> Let's take that Gaussian blur and pump it up to about five to start. And then we can come down to our halation layer here and turn the blend mode to add. Now it's just focusing on the outside of the lights that we want. And so that is another way of doing it. And this works great, like I said, if you're working in 16-bit or 32-bit. Now, to make life a little bit easier, I created a preset that you can download from my website for free called the MGH Halation version two. What this has is the Cineon converter, the curves, the fine edges, the tint, and the Gaussian blur. Uh, also gives you a little instructions, help you get going pretty quickly here. And all you have to do is just come in and just edit these values per shot and per taste. I never know how to end these things. So with that, stay cool, stay rad, stay creative. <laughs>